G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about the Jefferson Curl exercise and why it's not only an exercise that you should be aware of, but one that you should potentially be doing every day to not only help strengthen and make your spine more robust and tolerant, but to increase your spinal flexibility. So the first and probably the most important thing to point out is that the Jefferson curl does look like an exercise that you would do if you wanted to hurt your back. And that's very reasonable because bending forward is often one of the leading causes that we attribute to people injuring their backs. And while any back pain is far more complicated and nuanced than just saying that bending forward is bad for you, there is broader context that I need to provide you with to help you feel more comfortable with the idea of doing a Jefferson and curl for lower back health and longevity. And the main reason why this myth or misconception persists is that if you are someone who has ever bent forward and hurt yourself, we need to think of that moment as the last straw, not the start of something new. And this brings me to why the Jefferson curl is highly valuable and not something to be feared. Because clinically as a physiotherapist, when we're trying to understand why one specific part of someone's back becomes a problem, when we take a step back and look at the basic shapes and postures that people get into the most throughout their day without realizing it, we can often see a direct link and correlation between where the hinge point of their spine is and where the part of their spine that has become dysfunctional is. And the key point here is that we don't want you to break a, a lovely up tall neutral spinal position with a hinged position where you're isolating one specific part of your spine and then consistently loading up that spine more specifically for days, weeks, months, years even. So when we get to the Jefferson curl in a second, we're not talking about an isolated specific hinge through your spine. We're talking talking about a broad, general, global bend of your spine where in theory everything is bending equally and the load is being distributed across the breadth of that spine. And while the Jefferson curl is absolutely an exercise that's important to feel comfortable doing at some stage, so is making sure that you're also paying attention to the basic shapes and postures that you might be getting into and getting pulled out of consistently throughout your day so that all the hard work of trying to improve your strength and flexibility through a Jefferson curl isn't wasted by them being stuck in the same shapes that you may have been in previously and then asking those specific parts of your spine to segmentally get stiffer, tighter, weaker and more dysfunctional. So let's get into that Jefferson curl. So once you feel you have a better understanding of why global spinal flexion shouldn't be feared, but ultimately chased and cultivated, then hopefully the Jefferson curl won't feel as daunting to do. But the basics of a Jefferson curl just require you to be standing on a flat, stable surface. Standing up comfortably tall with your belly drawn in just to create some added stability through your trunk. We wanna think of each individual segment of your spine gently flexing forward and forward and forward until you make your way all the way down as far as you feel comfortable. And then when we get to the bottom, we just wanna then reverse that process. We feel like one spinal section upon another spinal section is just slowly straightening back up again. So for me, you wanna start with your head, taking your neck down, segmentally bending through each level, getting lower and lower and lower, trying to keep your core muscles engaged going down as deep as you feel comfortable until you feel like you've reached the end of your range. And then coming back up again is as simple as reversing that process, starting with the bottom layers and then just straightening yourself up and then coming back up to that starting position. And one of the good things about doing this Jefferson curl in a very slow and controlled manner is you'll get to a point where you'll feel like you hit a little bit of a, a stiff or a rusty spot. So for me, I can sort of feel that a little bit through my lower back. So what I have the option of doing is I can isolate that spot and just gently work through those segments, prompting my musculature and the joints and soft tissues around there to mobilize. 
Now, obviously, you want to go through this a few times just to feel comfortable and safe before you then start to isolate specific segments in that way. But it is a different isolation to a slouched isolation because we're still trying to globally move through those rusty spots, but just in a more specifically isolated area. But what I would recommend that you try and do is if you can do a set of five, have a break, go do something else, go to sleep, recover, come back to it the next day, and then go through that process again, do five, do 10, do whatever you feel generates a little bit of light fatigue up to the point where you start to do sets of 10, sets of 15. And what you should very quickly feel after a few days is you should start to feel like your back is not only a little bit more mobile than it could be, but you may feel an added sense of strength and stability at the same time. So as always, I genuinely hope that, that was helpful and insightful. Please let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on the Jefferson Curl. Have you done it before? And what's your experience been? I really want to normalize bending for people provided that it's done in the right way and it has the necessary context attached to it to understand why it may or may not feel good for you to do specifically but as always thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time bye